Well, time for another video on this instrument here, HP uh, 8011A pulse generator. Sweet, sweet device. I uh, just received this today. I uh, hooked it up on the bench and kind of ran it through its paces. I had to clean all the switches, though. That uh, is pretty much normal. It was being a little intermittent and didn't want to work correctly, so we popped the covers off and cleaned all the switches. They're easy to get to. So I'll uh, we'll pop the covers off here later and I'll show you just how easy it was to, to clean those things. But I've been sitting here running it through its paces. I got right now it's uh, doing pretty good. We got uh, an output frequency of uh, just a little over a kilohertz, 1065 hertz. The pulse width that I have set is just a smidge over uh, 10 microseconds. And here on the scope, Let's see here, I center this here. I'm using the X uh, using the X wide or the X delay function in that. This one here that I'm moving is a, is ten microseconds across. Awesome. Well let's uh, take a look inside. Well as you can see in the top top row of switches are really easy to get to. They're all open. So it was really, really easy to clean those. The uh, potentiometers, on the other hand, those are all sealed, but you know, you'd know you work them back and forth a few times and uh, they clean right up. And all the switches down in there are all easy to get to, really easy. And this, uh, this particular unit has come with option one. that allows you to uh, set the unit up to do bursts, pulse bursts. And you can select you know, uh, up to 9,999 pulse bursts. Nice feature to have. But uh, I essentially got this uh, unit to replace another one that I bought. I bought a, uh, a different version of this. Unfortunately, it uh, let the factory smoke out. And so I saw this one and I said, you know, I think I'll get this one, give it a try, and I'm glad I did. It's very nicely designed, nice uh, HP craftsmanship on the inside. And let's see here, it uh, looks like it was made around 1983 or so. Some of the components in here have, uh, what's it, this? Looks like the 32nd week of 83, uh, at least a couple of these components, so it's got some age on it, but uh, it's a nice, uh, nice instrument. It's working great. Down there's the counterboard. But, yeah, classic HP construction. No expense spared in these things. Why these things were worth so much money, you know, when you look these things up in the catalog and you go, who in God's earth is going to pay that much for something like that? Well, now you know why. Another uh, nice view from the bottom there. Good size power transformer. Looks like all the uh, the boards are, are gold plated, gold plated traces. So yeah, definitely worth some money there. So here are a few of this thing's uh, features here. We have uh, switches to select a pulse period. They go from uh, 50 nanoseconds all the way up to 10 seconds. And here, there are selectable ranges here that are, can be controlled by this, uh, by this potentiometer here. Same thing with the pulse width. Um, it's uh, variable from 25 nanoseconds all the way up to 100 milliseconds. You can also select a square wave. Uh, you have your amplitude uh, controls here. Uh, this switch here controls uh, 250 millivolts to 1 volt. This one goes from 1 volt to 4 volts and 4 volts to 16 volts. Uh, we also have these this really cool function down here. This is option 1. This is the, uh, the, the, the uh, burst pulse counter. Allows you to do bursts up to 9,999 pulses. Very, very handy. 
And then over here we have the typical uh, output selection switches here. You have positive going, symmetrical, negative going, etc. We have an internal uh, 50 ohm load for this voltage selection here. And uh, we also got a single pulse output so you can pulse one pulse at a time. So let me uh, demonstrate the uh, this this function here and it's, it's it's really cool. So to set it into pulse burst mode, put it in burst mode, select our pulses. And I've got this thing set to totalize. So we'll open the gate and press this button here and we should get a thousand pulses. Yep, there we go. Another thousand, another thousand, and so on. So, yeah, I could think of a number of uh, useful functions for that in the, at least the digital realm. Uh, however, mostly I bought this thing mostly to uh, characterize noise blanker circuits, and uh, I needed something that I can control pulse width and period uh, with you know fairly good precision. Even though this isn't programmable. I can still use the uh, well either one of these counters here to set the pulse width and uh, and the uh, the frequency of the pulse. So I guess that'll just have to do because eventually I'll get something that's uh, programmable via HPIB. But hey, this was was a good bargain. It was like uh, 80 bucks, and so uh, it was it's in really good condition. I you'd be really hard pressed to find uh, sticker residue or you know, old cow stickers on it. This thing is in really nice condition, so and it performs just fine. But like I said, I had to uh, I had to clean all the switches because they were kind of intermittent. At first, I was going, "Oh man, did I just buy a, a parts unit again?" But once I started messing with the switches and I got it to actually do something, then I just went in and cleaned all the switches, and hey, the thing works great. So. Uh, if you can find one of these in really good condition, I would I would highly recommend it. If you just want just a basic pulse generator, uh, if you're going to be working with digital circuits, uh, get one with the uh, with option one. And uh, so anyway, well then I got my little celebration drink over there since this thing worked just fine after a little cleaning. Anyway, I think that's all for now. I just wanted to just throw something out there real quick, so we'll catch you guys next time.